Hi, I'm making this video because I have something exciting to show you that I've made. Um, I call it the Gatefluk Exporter. It's a tool I made to get assets out from Flash into other engines and tools. Um, I was making, or I've been making games for the iPhone and games for other platforms like C++. And uh, I've been a bit frustrated that I can't get the art I've made in Flash out into, into other formats easily. So I made a thing. Um, right now it does two things. It exports all the graphics you've made into PNGs and it exports um, animations into XML files. Uh, and as an added bonus, I've made it so it does fonts too. Um, and to make the best use of the graphics, it exports some metadata about the graphics like registration points. Um, Right now, I'm using XML files, but with some code of your own, you can easily make it you do JSON or, I don't know, CSV or whatever your engine parses happily. Um, let's take a look how it works. OK, so we start with this sweet looking leak. It's, it's normal flash vector graphics. I can grab parts here and move them about. I can, well, yeah, you get the, you get the drift. So, if I want to export this the normal way, I'd go File, Export, Export Image. This defaults to EMF for some reason. I go PNG, and I go Save, blah, blah, blah. OK, that's, that's fine if I just want to do one image. But we're making a game here, so we probably have more images. Um, so all the options we would have is doing like splitting the image afterwards in say Photoshop or something or exporting each thing separately. And that's that's a lot of work, especially if you want to change your assets around and do stuff with them. So that's why I made this exporter. It works like this. I have my leak here and the exporter works with textures and texture sheets. So the first thing I want to do is make this a symbol. So I go modify, convert to symbol. Let's call this leak. Um, okay, and I want to put this leak into a, a texture sheet, which, which is really just another symbol wrapping it. So I go and I convert this to symbol again, and I call this leak sheet. Uh, and I'm going to be using this in code, so I want to f make sure it's exported for ActionScript. And if you want, you can change this to sprite, but I'm going to leave it as movie clip because it doesn't really matter. Um, so now we have this leak sheet, if you will. Inside that is the leak, and inside that is the vector graphics. Now we can also tweak the, the registration point. Say I want mine around there, which might be useful if you're going to be spinning the leak or something. Um, um, now I need to add the actual exporter. And the way you do that, that is this, like this. So you bring up the, the properties for your project. Uh, in, in the option called Profile, you go Edit. And then you go into the Action Script settings, which are here. And on Library Path, you add the SWIC file that contains the, the code for the exporter. You can download that from the, from the site. Go like so. OK. OK. Now we're going to type up the, the custom code for this for this export. Um, and I have that prepared in my clipboard here. So the first thing we want to do is import uh, the simple export class. And also, we're going to need the extractors. Uh, there's a couple of those. But right now, we're just going to use the texture extractor. So we create a new exporter called simple export. And you need to pass a reference to this. Uh, which in this case is the like the root display object or the main stage, uh, and that's used to place the GUI we use to uh, actually output the files later. And then we uh, add a texture to the texture collection using the texture extractor, and that extracts from an instance of our leak sheet, the one we just made. Um, and once we've uh, extracted all the stuff we want, we tell it to export, and this will initiate the uh, like the compression and everything of all the files. Um, so let's take a look and see how this runs. Okay, so it's extracting from the leak sheet. It's compressing the leak. 
and exporting the XML, and there's no animations and no fonts. So far, so good. So this is the GUI I was talking about. Um, and I click this, and it gives me the like a file reference, same thing. Save this on my desktop, and take a look at the desktop. Here's an old folder. Let's delete that, and then we go extract. So get a data folder, and inside this folder is the image of the leak. Um, you can see it's like nicely cropped with I think two pixels of like empty space on each side, which is useful if you don't want to get your sampling messed up. And then there's the XML file. Um, so this is a texture sheet named leak sheet, and inside it is the leak, and it has a width and a height and a path and a registration point. Uh, that's the point we set put in, inside Flash. Pretty cool, huh? So, if we want to step this up and do some more advanced stuff, we can. I have prepared. If you look inside the library, I have more things in here. Um, let's take a look at some um, sheet animations. I have an animation here, of, uh, or a, a texture sheet here called Darwin Sheet. This just contains the, the one texture right now. Um, so this is Darwin right here. You can see, you also need to remember, like, when you're, if, if I go inside this, so this is inside the sheet, you can tell up here, you need to name all the parts. If you don't name them, they will be ignored. So remember that. It will give you a message if it's, if it's ignoring something, but it's good to know. So Darwin has animations. He's going with his arms up and down. Um, this is a pretty simple animation. Yeah, so the tool can export these too. Um, so this one is exporting already as Darwin Sheet. So let's add that. And do Darwin Sheet here too. Compile, export. Everything looks good. Click to output. Overwrite. And then we will extract this baby. So what we got now is the tool notices that this is a multi-frame animation and steps through it and makes it like an animation sheet of it. So this is all the individual frames. This is useful for some types of animation, like simpler, smaller animations or very complicated animations that you can't really break up into discrete parts. Um, this also gets um, an entry in the XML file looks like this. So you get the Darwin sheet, and there's a texture named Darwin, it has a width and a height, and blah 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 blah. It also has a frame count, which is 28. Pretty good. Uh, another cool thing you can do is you say you want to add um, an, another animation in here. So I, I want to go Darwin 2. I'm just going to use the same one now to demonstrate and I can go, I can use all the color, crazy color effects that's in Flash. So I want to tint him to be a little bit red maybe, and put, uh, I don't know, nice gradient glow on him. This looks horrible, but hey. Um, and he's named Darwin too, so let's run this, see what happens. Everything exports. Click to output. So now we get a second Darwin here, Darwin 2, and it maintains all the effects I put on him, um, which is pretty neat. But these animations, you can see, like they, they turn into pretty big sheets, so, like immediately. This is like, come on, Picasso. This is like a lot of pixels already. So you may you want to do something more compact. Um, so that's where the XML animations come come in. So I have this very complicated animation here uh, from our game or a game I made together with Petri looks like this um, God scores yay um, so this is a classic flash timeline animation got a bunch of layers here with classic tweens on them um, 
nothing very exciting. So each part here is um, bring that back is named. They need to be named, same thing, and they need to maintain the same name for the entire animation. So the exporter knows which part is which because it's only looking at the names. Um, uh, so there's the text. I think there's two parts of the cloud. There's the rainbow right here, and there's the, the rays in the background. Another thing you also need to set up when you want to do the XML animations is do the frame labels. So this is the um, the name of the first part of the animation. This is God's Chorus Intro, which is the first part. And it'll keep going and parsing that until it comes up on another one, name another frame label. So this is God's Chorus Loop. Uh, there's also a special frame label. Um, if you just name it Loop, It'll use that as a flag for when this animation, like when this animation comes to an end, it will go back here and start playing from here. This is up to you and your tools or whatever you want to use it for, but that's how I'm using it in my, my stuff anyway. Uh, and there's also the outro here. Um, so if we want to parse this, we go... First we need to parse out all the textures from it. And uh, you know how that works by now. So it's God scores. Nothing fancy there. And this is a little bit different now because now we need to extract the animations. Uh, so we use the animation extractor. And we go extract. And this will, um, this needs uh, a reference to it. We can't just add simply because it may return multiple things. So we need to give it a reference to our animation collection. So we know, go exporter animations, and then we supply an instance of the god scores, like so. Okay, let's see how this works. Oops. Oh, oh, sorry. Let's export. Here we go. Exporting. Click to output, save, yes, to the desktop, extract. So if we look in here now, we get all the parts of the animation. The rays are in here too, they're a bit hard to see, but they're in there. Um, and we get an animations.xml. Um, this baby has all the animation parts I defined in, in the flash. So the first one would be God Scores Intro. Oops. Um, so this is God Scores Intro. It's 44 frames long. It contains a part named Cloud Back, another part named Cloud Front, and finally Rainbow, Race, and Text. Um, all these subparts have uh, frames. So and it, all the properties that are exported is x, y, scale x, scale y, um, and also alpha, but alpha is 100% right here, so it's not exporting that, and uh, the frame index. Pretty cool, huh? So this can be imported in your engine or whatever you have that can parse stuff like this, and you can easily change this if you look at the code. Um, that's pretty much how the animation or the, the entire exporter works. Um, yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of demos with the, with the source code, and you can try out and do stuff with it. Um, all the code is open source. It's under the simplified BSD license, and it's up on GitHub, and there's a link in the video description. I really hope this will be useful to people, and you can take this and make something bigger out of it and use it for your games, and it's it's all free, so... Do whatever you please with it. If you're using it, drop me an email. I'd be happy to know. Um, and yeah, have fun. <laughs>